Hi there, thank you for joining us and today, in today's lesson we'll be looking at functions and relationships specifically at input and output values first. So, a function is a rule that shows the relationship between the input value and the output value. So therefore each input value there is only one output value. So important parts to note about this are going to be a function is a rule that shows the, the relationship between the input and output values so that for each input value there is only one output value so each input value there is only one output value okay so there are very important parts for you to note so let's see the first example they give us they say Use the given rule to calculate the value of t for each value of p. So, if we're looking at this now, all of these values on the left, sorry, all of these values here on the left hand side are going to be our input values, which fall underneath p, and on the right hand side is going to be our output values, which fall under the value t. And in the middle of here is going to be our rule that we'll be using. So, if you look at our rule, we have t is equal to p times 2 plus 1. What that tells us is then that to find t, we have to substitute in the value of p in the place of p over here, right? So what I'm saying is, <clears throat> let's write out the rule. It says t is equal to p times 2 plus 1. Now that we have that out, now we can try and see, okay, we need to substitute a value into this position over here so we can find out the value of t, right? So we're going to go to our first p-value, which is, as we can see over here, is 2. So if we're going to substitute that in, we're going to have t is equal to 2 which we then times by 2 and then add 1. Right? So what's going to happen is now we're going to have t is equal to 2 times 2 which is 4 plus 1 which is 5. Once we get that answer we can go to our t value and write it in 5. Right? So you can see the first value that went in was 2 and the first value that came out was 5. So the output value for, the, for 2 is 5. Now if we're going to substitute some more now we're going to have t is equal to so we're substituting in the next p-value, which is 0. So it's 0 times 2 plus 1. So that's going to give us an answer of 0 times 2 is 0 plus 1, which is giving me 1. Substituting that in now into our t-value over here. So our second output value is 1. Now to look at the next input value. We have is negative 2, so we have negative 2 now times 2 plus 1, right? So you can see it's very simple. All we're doing is substitute in the value that we found over here, right? So once we do that, we get negative 2 times 2, it's a negative times a positive, so we get a negative 4 plus 1. So t is going to equal negative 3 because negative 4 plus 1 will give me negative 3 so now straight away we can go and write that in as negative 3 now we're going to move on to the next one t is equal to our next input value is negative 4 times 2 plus 1 So if we're going to work that out, negative 4 times 2 is going to give me negative 8, plus 1 is going to give me negative 7. And then for our last t value that we have to find, we're going to use our, sorry, let me just go back quickly. Remember, after we find our answer, we got to substitute it in here underneath t so we know what our output value is. Now we can move on to the next one. So we have t, the next input value is negative 6, right? That's going to be times by 2 plus 1, right? So t is going to equal to 
negative 6 times 2 is going to give me what? Negative 6 times 2 is going to give me negative 12. It's a positive times a negative, so it's a negative. Negative 12 plus 1 will give me negative 11. And just like that, we found all of our input value, our, all of our output values from our input values, right? This shows you that for every input value, there is only one output value. The way it goes across is from the two in, then from the from in out to the five, right? Same over here for the negative four. Negative four goes in, and then negative seven comes out. So that's the corresponding output value for the input value, right? Moving on to the next example. So uh, when we're dealing with each one here, so you can pause your video now and you can start to work out each one. And then you can unpause the video, video to continue with me as I go through the answers, okay? Because I won't be substituting in this time. You can do that in your book. So our P value over here is one. So we're going to be substituting one into the value P over here, right? So if we're going to do that, we're going to say now it's 1 times 3 plus 2. Cool. So if we're doing 1 times 3, that's 3 plus 2 is giving me 5. Moving on to our next p-value, we get that our next p-value is... 2, so it's 2 times 3 plus 2. So if we do that, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 2 is going to give me 8. Moving to the next input value. Next input value we're dealing with is 3, right? So we're going to have 3 times 3 plus 2. So 3 times 3 gives me 9. 9 plus 2 gives me 11. Cool. So what is our next input value? Our next input value is going to be 4. So we get 4 times 3 plus 2. So 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2 is 14. And then for our last input value that we are dealing with, you can see that our last input value is 5. So we have 5 times 3 plus 2. So 5 times 3 will give me 15. 15 plus 2 will give me 17. So once you, again, you can see that for every input value, we have a corresponding output value. So all we did now was substitute our p-value into this equation to find our t-value over there. And then we put our values in here on this side over here. So, we're done with that now, so we can move on to our next set of examples. So now we're going to be looking at numeric patterns and geometric patterns, okay? So, this is write down the rule which gives the relationship between P and T in each of the following. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this by analysis, okay? So, we're going to look at what we've got. So, we got our p-value of T, right? Of 1, sorry. And we got a t value of 3. What can I do to 1 to get to 3? I can add 2, right? So if now this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> if I see that I have to add 2 to get to 3, I'm going to look at the next one. It has to apply the same rule. So I have to add 2 to 2 to get 6, right? So now I'm adding 2 onto 2. I'll get 4, so I won't get 6, right? So I need to think about another way I can get from 1 to 3. Another way I can get from 1 to 3 is timesing 1 by 3, right? So what happens if I times 2 by 3? If I times 2 by 3, I'm going to get 6. And if I check the next value, if I times 3 by 3, I'm also going to get 9. Which means that we can confirm that that is the rule for, this, for, this, for the relationship between P and T in this example. So if we're going to write that out now, the rule... If we're going to write the rule out, we're going to get... So remember, t is the, is the the answer we're trying to find, right? So we're going to write t is equal to, 
So now we have to think about our rule. What did we do to P to get the T? We times P by 3. So the way we can write that rule out is 3P. So that shows you that any value of P you're going to put in here, you're going to times it by 3 to get to T. And that confirms the rule that's over here, right? So if I'm going to confirm it by doing a substitution, I'm going to get T is equal to 3 times, let's say, P value 2. So I'm going to get T is equal to 6. So you can see we've confirmed that the rule does work. Now we're going to look at the next one. What did they do to, f to 1 to get to negative 3? They could have minus 4. So we check that. 1 minus 4 is equal to negative 3. So now we look at 2. 2 minus 4 is equal to negative 2. Seems like we're onto something now. So let's look at 3. 3 minus 4 is going to give me negative 1. So we can confirm that that is definitely the rule. So once again, we'll write out our rule. So t is equal to. So what did we do to p to get to t? We minus 4 from p. So we'll say t is equal to p minus 4. So to confirm that rule now, I'll substitute in a value. t is equal to. So now we're substituting in the 6 minus 4. t is equal to 2. So that confirms this part over here with the 6 minus the 4 is equal to the 2. So therefore we found the rule for this numeric pattern. So now let's look at these number sequences. We need to find the value of P and the value of T. So we have 11, we have 22, right? So what do we do to 11 to get to 22? We added 11, right? We can say that we added 11. We could also say we times 11 by 2. But that means we'd have to time each term by 2, right? So if I times 22 by 2, I'd get 44. If I times 44 by 2, I'd get 88. And that's already higher than the 55 over here. These values P and T have to be lower than 55. So we try the addition. So this would be 11, right? This would be 22. So let's try P. P would be 33. T would be 44. And as you can see, moving on to the next turn, if I added 11 again, I would have gotten 55, confirming that this rule works. Then if I'm looking at number 2, we have 1, 4, 7, P and T. So what is the relationship between 1, 4 and 7? If we look at it, it looks like they've added 4. And it seems like, sorry, my bad, it looks like they added 3. So 1 plus 3 gives me 4. So looking at that, does it apply to the 7 as well? What gives me 7 from 4? Adding 3. So we can confirm that this is the rule, right? So let's add 3 to 7 now. That will give us our p-value. p is then equal to 10. So that's after adding 3. Now let's add 3 again to get the r. T. So P was 10, so now we're adding 3. So T is equal to 13. Cool. So let's look at our final example now. This is going to be our geometric example. Okay. So it says here record the number of dots in each array in a table. Determine the diagram pattern, hence, determine the amount of dots in the 25th array if the pattern is continued. So let's record the amount of dots. So firstly, we write out which array we are busy with. So let's say we are writing out array one. We count the dots. There are one, two, three, four dots. So we'll say number of dots is four. We're looking now at array number two. If we count out the amount of dots, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then if we look at array number three, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 dots. So we've written out the table now. We have to determine the rule for this array. So <clears throat> we have to count. Okay. In the first array, they managed to get 4, right? What do we get to to 1 to get to 4? If you said that we added 3, you'd be correct. So let's check if that works for the next one. So 1 plus 3 gives me 4. 
2 plus 3 does not give me 8. So therefore that cannot be the rule. What else can I do to 1 to get to 4? I can times it by 4. So if I times 1 by 4, I get 4. If I times 2 by 4, I get 8. So now let's check the last value to confirm if this is the rule. So if I times 3 by 4, I get 12, which means that this must be the correct rule. So if we're going to write out the rule, we can write it as, so this is a special way that we can write it if we're not given any t or p value to work with, we can write it as tn. So that just is a standard form of writing it, okay? So it's going to be capital T. tn is equal to, let's see what the rule is. What did we do here? We did timesing by 4. So we're going to call the top values n. That's how we have tn over here, right? So if we were dealing with term 1, we'd say t1. So we're going to write in the rule now. What did we do to n? We're calling the top n. We times n by 4. So we're saying that the rule is 4n, right? So now they say work out the 25th array. So that would be n, right? Because we said the top is going to be n. So we just write it in. This is n. The top is n. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute 25 in the place of n. So what's going to happen is we're going to write it like this. Term 25. You can see how the, the n comes into play here. So term 25 is equal to 4. Now again there's another n. So now we say 4 times 25. So now we'll say that term 25, which is the 25th array, is equal to 4 times 25 is 100. And just like that, we've answered all of the questions. They said to record the number of dots in each array in the table. We did that. We just change the color on that. So we did that. Determine the diagram pattern. We did that. And then hence determine the amount of dots in the 25th array if the pattern continued. We did that. So we would get all the marks there. Thank you guys so much for joining us. That was our lesson on functions and relationships.